know what a drip your mind too tight Put socks on the rock, look who I grew up, I grew up poor I had to hustle, be mature, that's my point of view That's my point of view Hello everybody, Sun Wanani Dumelang and welcome to yet another episode of POV with me, your girl Gigi Lemayne, where we seek to understand and not to judge. And it is 2023, baby. Shout out to my crew in studio. Yes. And of course, guys, we're coming back with the heat. You guys, by popular demand, have put out how much you really, really, really need this man in studio. He's a social activist, uh, very controversial. Some have called him a menace to society, and some have even called him the leader of South Africa. Right now, something that is needed, a voice for young people. But of course, we're going to get into the gist of everything. And I just want to say a huge, huge thank you. And guys, if we could please, a huge round of applause, guys. Gata Lux is in the studio. Yay! <laughs> The last time I saw you was at the South African Hip Hop Awards. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes and you yes. were sitting right in the front. Yes, yes. And before that, we were at Pro's. Uh, yes, another you know, hip hop platform. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. Look, hip hop has always been an institution where some of us learned a lot mm. outside school. Yeah. Um, I'm, I come from the old school where. After school, you still go to school. Mm. Go a place called Gandhi Square. Some people know it as Funda Bale. If you're as old as me, I <laughs> went to Funda Bale. And that's where all Bo Adamas and Bo mm. Pro Kid would be there. Bo Amo, ah, Ammunition would do their thing. Yep. And we learned a lot. And that's why some of us can can speak and write English better than white people. Because Bo Pro, you know, we had to play with the language. So mm. for you to play with something, you have to master the basics first. Mm. And mm. and that's, that, that's why I love hip hop. Anything that's to do with hip hop, it speaks to the core of my history. And did you ever want to become a rapper? Mm-mm, because there was Pro Kid. I, I've never mm. done things where I know I'll be number two. <laughs> pro Kid. <laughs> where was what Thomas and Bob Pro Kid? You, you definitely, I mean, I'd, I'd rap to, to play around, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of rap songs start mm. to end. I know pro songs start to end. I know, yeah. I know old school hip hop songs like Jay Z when he was still Jay Z mm. back then, before mm. the trap started. And I mean, I can. I'm a, I'm a hip hop guy. Hip hop guy. I'm a hip hop guy. Who, Who's your favorite through? artist, like of all time? It's Pro Kid. Definitely. Yeah, pro. it's, it's a no brainer. It's that simple. simple. Pro is better than Jay Z, and I don't care who says what. Pound for pound, but you see, the problem is a lot of a lot of people will not know how to compare international mm. artists and local artists yeah. because they can't speak the vernacular like I can. Yeah. So I can compare the literature because I can write the vernacular and write in English, so then I can compare. So some of you sitting at home, you're like, ah, oh, what lame are Jay-Z? You only know how to interpret English literature. That's I true. can I can interpret Zulu literature, mm. Sotho literature. Mm. So when you come and ask me about lyricists, I, I'm more informed. I'm in a better position to tell you who's better. Pro mm. is the best that I've ever come across, full stop. What's crazy for me is you probably know how much he loved Jay-Z yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah Pro, he, Pro Kid loved Rick Ross, Jay-Z, would rap along to those, yes. to those guys back the whole day the whole night no yeah. problem yeah. master ace look he, he loved a lot of guys mm. but i'm telling you pound for pound mm. and i think because he mastered their way of of doing this mm. art he then knew what to do better mm. and that's that's why he probably was better and it's something to celebrate not to contend because if you say that someone that is younger who learned from you is better than you that means you were now you are better generation mm. now we live in a world where you're seeing in parliament there's all these dinosaurs sitting around. They don't want anyone younger, better than them. <laughs> all right, then. Mm. That took a turn. <laughs> Tell me about the word lux. Where yeah. does lux come from? Because some people have said luxury. Some people yeah. have said, you know, washing away. Where does the word lux come from now? So the word lux is, is the, a name that my grandfather used to turn and call okay. me. Because he had a best friend in the factories where he worked. I think it was like a radio factory or something mm. back in the day. Mm. And there was a Mr. Luxembourg who during apartheid time, Mr. Luxembourg um, never would always tip them that the whites in South Africa are coming to arrest you on Wednesday. But uh, him in particular. So he was mates with this guy, like strong mates with this guy. Mm. To, th to the core, you know. Mm. So this Lux thing then resonated with him. And my name is Ntlantla. And the white guys, because I, I, I was fortunate enough to go to 
both St. David's and all these schools JP where boys, yeah. where it's always a problem, JP boys, where it's always a problem for the teachers to pronounce your name. So they'd always want a name that won't won't be too bad to pronounce. So my grandfather also called me Lucky Boy because Lucky. of Ntlantla, you see? Mm. Yeah, so, and some of them, and if you, your name is Lucky, you would know if your name is Lucky. Some, a lot of people would shorten it and just say Lux, mm. you see? Okay. But, and then it, it, it had a pun to it because my grandfather, Luxembourg, and then my, and then my, transla- my name translated in English is Lux, mm. is Lucky, and then Lux stays. Mm. All the people that think it's from Luxury, Luxurious, for me Lux- it's a compliment. Ah. You it's, see, <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a problem <laughs> speaking of that would you say that you came from like i know i know i know some of the controversy around Danta lux has always been you know how can you tell the story of the township having gone to a saint david's yeah. having gone to jp boys i'm in no space to really judge because i'm yeah. a dominican convent girl. yeah i was about to tell you <laughs> <in case laughs> you <laughs> haven't told it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> So, I mean, like, um, wouldn't you say that that's kind of been problematic in terms of, you know, I don't know, like a bit of an identity crisis? It's not. Let me tell you why it's not. I can take you to history before I speak about myself. Mm. Nelson Mandela went to Eastern Cape, but he came to a place called Soweto and dominated us in leadership. Who, who's judging now? Who's judging now? Look what the man has done to us. Look, look what the man has done for us, honestly. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Gauteng is a gold rush province. N- no one can really say they're from Gauteng. From here, it's true. So don't, don't come tell me about misinformed people who think that they have a voice on Twitter because they've got a little bit of data or where they work, there's Wi-Fi, they can speak and tag lux. D- don't do those things, it's a mistake. Mm. But what I can tell you for sure with me, mm. I, sl- I grew up in a house where there's 22 of us. Mm. I slept on a kitchen floor. I slept, I slept got in room as I grew older because that's where you graduate. Mm. And then if you work and if you, if you, you know, you get old and you work, you sleep on the bed. If you don't 22. work, you, you sleep with the kids. Yeah. Come, come, lands. 47, the Rutu Street, one three middle lands. That's where I grew up. You see? So it's not my problem that I did not have a problem with pen, putting pen to paper. What took me to school is not mm. my parents' money. Gotcha. It's academic bursaries. Gotcha. It's not my problem that, that my, my mind works better than some, some people. That when you write exams, they pick me, not you. Mm. It's the numbers. They don't lie. Mm. Okay. And, and I got to the schools. And when I got to the schools, it happens that I'm actually great at sports. Mm. And they give me, a fi- I had a 50% bursary. Mm. And then before the year ended, they, they, put, they, they put me on a sports scholarship, 50%. Mm. It took me through school for free. Mm. How many siblings do you have? Um, from my mom, one. From my dad, um, two. So explain the 22. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying uh, to... Si- siblings is, is, is your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. But, okay, but so but now it's... But really in black is culture. Everybody. In black culture, your cousins are your brothers. You just... Mm. They, they, they then teach you. They redefine your cousins for you as you grow older. Mm. By the way, it's your cousin. Eh? What's that? Mm. Oh, your cousin, cousin. But we grew up knowing that... And that's it. And yeah. my mom's sisters are my mothers. This English thing, I promise you, it's something that we never ever were conscientized mm. or even taught or even, even you know. So we, I always knew that, that as long as someone is older, they, they, they're your parents in the community. So what was your own home? Mm. You see what I mean? You sound like you were quite uh, problematic as a child. I wasn't very, very, at all. very opinionated in the house. No, N- not at Why all. Why must because, I do because the dishes had, again? No, no, <laughs> because I had a very smart grandfather. The, a lot of the problems in black families is that our our families are broken. Mm. The structures are gone. Mm. We don't even know what family means in the black family anymore. We mm. don't know that this thing of mamkholo, ukoko, umalume, they actually institutions that come together to create family. So when you eliminate Malome from the family structures, you're eliminating a lot of our cultures because there's some things that are done by Malome. There are some things that are done by the aunt. There yeah. are some things that, because you can't speak about sex the first time with your mother, but you can speak about sex the first time with your mother's sister. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's apparently life orientation that teaches you sex. is not your family anymore. But it's, it's, it's just what it is. It's it. Yeah. So a day in Ntlantla's life 
going to school and coming home. Yeah. What does that look like? Yo. I want to understand from Yo. how much they exceed. Did Yo. you metro bus like Yo. us? You know, um, metro bus. The friends at school is like Jacob and them, you know, and then like you get off and abo bonga ne kone. Like I really just want you to map out a sure. day in your life in high school. Sure. High school. Yeah. Uh, let's let's start primary. Okay. P- primary ke, ke transport. Yeah. If 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 you you know that first generation of black people post ninety four. Hmm. But you would have beep four o'clock was saying five o'clock I was one of them. So p- transport and then high school because you're too busy, there's extra mural activity. Transport doesn't wait for extra mural. I don't know today, but not in my day, it never. So I would then be forced to, to start using using taxis. So my day in high school would be 4 a.m. I must be up. Okay. And then by 5, I'm ready to leave the house because I'm one of those kids who don't carry one school bag. I don't have one school bag. Now bag it with my tray. Mm. A sports bag, another bag, and another bag, cause, and a blazer. You know those blazer schools. You yeah, know those are, sounds yeah. like me. <laughs> sure. So uh, I'm then go pre from mm. Midlands. I'm garage, an old garage called Sputnik Garage. In Kisapri, from Kopri, I must change. Or if it's not pre, here MTN. Mm. MTN is now called MTN. There's up nearly north, there's nearly where the star, where the bridge. Mm. So, he can akara, in Kisa, scale in Kisa, sent in Kapa before nearly JP, get JP. And then from Mo, I do my things at what, six after extra mural activities, because you know those schools take them serious. Mm. We end at like five or six mm. when the sun sets. And then from there, I'm on a taxi again, a two hour trip back home. I get mm. at home at eight. Mm. And I, I haven't done homework or anything like that. And people don't understand the dynamics of how much of a special kid you need to be. If you're traveling two hours in the morning, two hours in the, in, in the evening, just to make it through a system called education. Mm. A lot of people undermine it. It's one of the toughest things in terms of logistics. Yeah. You, I mean, I knew how to wake myself up while everybody in the house was sleeping. Get ready and leave the house. Leave, leave, I'm saying leave, gone. Let's go long. Mm. And when I get to St. David's, it's it's probably and uh, the people that I'm in class with, they woke up 30 minutes ago. They, they are fresher than me by far. I'm telling you. You see what I mean? I'm telling you. And then you you're going to get people with data now trying to judge you, tell you about your life. Yeah, that's true. What was your favorite subject? It was biology. I'm st- I'm actually mean at biology. You can you can give me biology quiz right now. No, I sucked at food. biology. I hated yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The amoeba bits and stuff sure. that kind of yeah, lost me. Yeah, 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 no, sure. no, no. Biology? biology? Yeah. Not and history, it, not uh, uh, I was I'm 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 I was actually good at most, yeah, most. most right? Okay. Yeah, because I'm you know what people misunderstand? It's it's character and it's the environment that kids enjoy. It's not the textbook or the content. Mm. So when you go to these schools, your best friends with the biology teacher, Miss Webb, but she was, she, she, she was just super amazing. She, you know what I mean? She wasn't just the teacher that teaches you about, about animal cells and plant cells, photosynthesis and all mm. that. She'd even look at your character and help you understand it better and relate it to sports because you're a sports guy and those who like this would try to teach it in that way. And by the way, interesting fact, in my biology class, it was the only class where Miss Webb would make me stand up because I'd often stand up and move around the class. Mm. And people would think that it's an attention uh, thing or focus thing. It's not, it's just who I am. So she hated how the, the, the chair would make a noise. Mm. So she would make me stand, not only to realize later that I actually focus better standing. And that's why I could, I, I, I passed her subject better than most. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sure. And going back to um, the fact that she could kind of delve into your personality while teaching you. Oh, yes. Do you yes. think that is an issue, Kokas? Like, the fact that it's so... You know, I, I have friends who are, you know, educated in some schools, public schools mm. in the hood, and it's it's dog eats dog there. Nobody really cares. If you get it, you get it. You don't, you don't. Sure, sure. Um, do you think, like, that that is something important mm. as well to... Extremely. Not, yeah. It's extremely important. Look, I've always said when I talk to, to students, that the environment is the master of the mindset. Mm. I do not care who you are. If you want to be a cricket player, you best believe you chill with cricket players. Mm. If you chill with soccer players, it's just a matter of time. You're going to turn into a soccer player. I can even take it to to, to a more intense example. If you chill with people by young Josi, where I come from, where Josi kulo spina, kulo pand. I'll chill about to spina. It's a matter of time. Uto spina at some point. 
if you want a great life just plan what you want if you want to be uh, um if you want to be a musician just just make sure you're chilling and the only people you're following are musicians on your social media it's true it, it's going to influence you to become one chill with so, billionaires so, perhaps chill with billionaires perhaps mm -hmm. perhaps if you can, you're known yeah. to chill with billionaires yeah no problem i've got plenty of billionaire Ooh, friends Ooh, you got plenty you need to introduce yeah. me to your billionaire friends no i want to be a billionaire no marry problem. one perhaps you know and you know a lot of <laughs> a lot of the guys that are billionaires for them it's not a financial thing yeah and i know you most people pr probably heard this mm. but i'm telling you now it's true success is a state of mind guys B being a billionaire those guys live live easier than most guys that i know that don't have money let me tell you i can show you the top 10 richest people that i know those people do not go around in designer sneakers and anything like that. Mm. They they just they just casual guys. Mm. They casual. They drive the same tires for the last ten years. But look at their property portfolio. Mm -hmm. Incredible. It's it's sick. They've got property in New York City. Lux, where are you going to? In in please check on my property. I haven't been there for a while. Uh one toilet children. Rona. Ba alang mofati go dine room. Yo, eh la costa ra eja no. Listen, <laughs> it's about take me back. Ah yeah yeah yeah. yeah Throw yeah, back yeah. to that time. We've taken so much content hey. for one weekend. You're making it look like one month because you know <laughs> you need to roll out that thing. <laughs> you need to roll out that if, thing. If you go to Devon July, um. You know, I don't have a problem about going. Gabu Kutlano are actually amazing business people mm. that we need to actually shout out and give more, 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 more attention to and mm. so forth, right? But if you go to Bokonga mm. and you handpick people like this and you say, let's go to your house, mm. show me the state that your mother lives in. Hey! But come back zero, but Baba Scott or Juta in public and what do I? But come back zero, right? It's about being a promise, ne? Yeah, yeah sure. But come back zero in Tutti. Bascar Blella. Not leave, but get leave. I'll share like your relatable shell, but I'll go away. Scampler could later the banker, scampler like a cool later the Zabu Chomi. But I get packaging, I get that's how they get us. But you also condition guys to behave that way, so I don't blame them too much. But I promise you, if you want to catch someone out, go look at how their parents live. And if their parents are dead, go look at the state of the grave of their parents. Then you'll know the real person. Don't tell me about this materialistic nonsense. How about, guys, I hope the girls are listening. If I pull up in the McLaren, the McLaren doesn't get into bed with you. You're going to have to deal with me naked at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me about those nonsense <laughs> materialistic <laughs> things. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you seen how disgusting it is to actually just, I'm not saying intense things, just kiss a guy. Because it's a more M5, more PMO. Above first day, I'm a rotter. I'm a tick. I'm low. I'm a lily, lily everywhere. Yeah, lily everywhere. But the politician, because it's like a udulago parliamenting. But pay back the money. Ebo mule la mauto. Ebo mule la mauto. Guys, at some point, you must be naked with this person. Think about if you can't think for yourself. Think about the future because after naked is pregnancy. Do you wanna? What are we missing, Jazzy? Have you seen them? Have you seen their their families, their mothers and their fathers? Do, do you want that in your a part of your genetic makeup <laughs> moving forward? I luna lita, te luna banyan. But biology states wait. <laughs> but biology states no. And I could be wrong. Mm, mm. Actually, bring the biology. Bali. Bring it here. Right. Yeah. States that. Um, okay, let's do normal social yeah. Darwinism, right? Mm. Normal social Darwinism yeah. is that. I pick you yeah. because you're a protector. You can provide for me. You can look after me. I feel safe around yes. you. And you pick me because I'm younger. I'm attractive. I can give you children that are attractive. Yeah. And that's how it works. Mm -hmm. So surely at that point, because mm -hmm. you're driving a very big, nice car, yeah. you parked outside Konka, you paid yeah. a 200k bill. Did you, you hear know? what biology said? Bi what Konka. Did it say? Konka. It has Konka? nothing to do with the biology. But Konka's explained. money. No, let, let me show you something. But Konka's money. That's a perception that they, they, they want you to believe. Konka's not money. If I earn 100K, right, and I pay 50,000 for the house that I live in, and I pay 50,000 for the car, that means I can't afford your nails, it's 100 grand, and my money's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Where's mm -hmm. the financial security in that? Nothing. So, 
let me tell you what biology says. Mm. I'll be attracted to what is, if I'm a male, mm. generally, I'll be attracted to what is very close to my mother. Do you know that? That's, that's what true biology says. Freud. And then, and then yes, that's it. And then if, as, as a female, you'll be attracted to? My dad. Your dad. And if you didn't have a dad to reference, your uncle or whichever mm. male figure was stronger in your life. Because that's what your the depth of your consciousness understands and nothing else. So as an animal, you'll want to identify that in society and reproduce to multiply what yeah. makes sense to you. But if the, the men in your life were bad examples, unfortunately, you are going to recreate all that negativity and nonsense. Oh. It's just what it is. Like, I can't even begin to tell you. And that's the whole breaking the... Whatever you have That's to pay the curse and yes, yes, yeah. yes. So how did you become a pilot? By going to school. And but you finished? Hundred percent. Practiced? Practiced? Like not practice, but yeah. like so, you actually like. So native airways. Yes. What yeah. flew ball pro kid around? What flew my figures all around? I'm happy they're all alive to tell you this if you ask them. Mm. And shout out to all of them because mm -hmm. they decided to give me business when they could have given it to British Airways or anybody like that. Mm. Whenever they fly around in the, in the continent, they check with us first and say, can we fly with you guys? And we're like, with pleasure. And that's why, and that's how we grew. So mm. flying is not, so I want you to understand something about flying. There's PPL. PPL, uh, average language is a private Courtney. pilot license okay. right that explains itself and then there's a CPL a commercial, commercial. pilot license right. and then there's an ATPL where you fly for airlines got you right so a lot so I, I didn't I didn't ever want to fly for airlines because it's boring like pilots won't tell you this is boring mm. it's like warenka guys it's under fire we are pre it's a pre we under fire it's under fire we are pre it's a pre at some point that starts becoming you regurgitate and you borderline vomiting. Mm. That's for me, right? So I then said to myself, I'm a dynamic human being. I just want to be able to fly wherever I want to fly and without without being in um, air transport or one more landing mm. in a certain line. So, so from there, I was like, I'm going the business route. The same way in my golf, I'm a professional golfer, studied with the PGA. A lot of people don't know that. Right now, as we speak, I've got a PGA qualification. Right now, as we speak, so, when all my boys mm. went to go play on the circuit, I flirted with it a little bit, but I said, I actually want to do the business. And that's how I owned the golf course. I owned the golf course when I was 22. Whoa. I know that about you. Yeah. A lot of people don't Yo, know they, that. They will never yeah. tell us that. Pro ya golf tre under par. Under par. It, it came from me playing golf. Because I taught him golf. Where else does he know golf from? Yeah. Why would he even have a smart way of rhyming, mm. including golf tre under par? Because he drove a golf tree and he knew that shooting anything under is actually a good score in golf. Not too many people probably know that listening at home. So You're reminding me of someone and it, it's mm. like, it's bothering me. Somebody yeah. in history who played sports, I think he knew how to fly planes, but I don't think we're allowed to talk about him because we'll get in trouble. Hansi? Who? He died in the plane, in the, in the crash? Who? Was it Hansi? Huh? The cricketer? No, Who? I saw it was yeah. a European leader. Was it not? Who would like play squash or something? And anyway, okay, yeah. when I re when I remember, guys, yeah. let me know. Let me know in the comments. But there is somebody. I think he used to play squash and he could fly planes. And yeah. I think I had a little bit yeah. of a a lot of them like. Yeah. <laughs> is it a reincarnation? I was looking at him <laughs> like, <laughs> is it a reincarnation? Sure. Okay, so is native uh, airline still operational? No, like, no, I, pu I put it on ice. Why? I made enough money. Okay. I knew I know when to stop, unlike many other people. And who funded it? Did you fund it? Guys, uh, let me give you a funding lesson. Funding lesson 101. Mm. They are lying to you. You don't need Standard Bank. You don't need anything. Mm. If I can fly a plane from here mm. to KZN, a two-hour flight, and I say that I can fly, and if the law says I must fly with someone else, perhaps with... Except I don't want to speak to technical aviation okay. here. So yeah. for everybody to listen. Mm. If I can fly to KZN and when you have an airline um, and, air, and you've got your, your, air, your operating certificate and all you need is a plane. Because mm. that's, that's the best thing that you're all asking. How do you buy the plane? Mm. And you go to all the planes that are hanging. Every airport there's a plane that hangs for more than eight months, no flying. And you go to the owner and say, guy, 
your plane you're paying rent to keep it at the airport because this is not your airport mm. but this is your plane i'm a student qualified at this level but i'm going to get someone because generally i know it, i don't mean to be racial Th- there's no white guy that will give this young black guy his own plane so i'll make a thing that i'll fly with whoever you trust mm. i'll go get the business and i use your your plane we sign it off so that means it's my plane now for a year you don't even interfere in it and instead of you paying rent it makes you money mm. it's business where where's the funding mm. who must fund me mm. you just use your head mm. and then when you start doing things that are extraordinary beyond the other person's mental ability thinking ability nope there must be funding yeah yeah the white people yeah yeah because that's what that's what <laughs> yeah. that's what they're saying about you let's be honest i mean it yeah, you know they and, saw a picture and, of you and i for mean me, and for me it's a compliment yeah do you know that that white picture that was trending say yeah you're 100 rupert's wife that lady that poor lady doesn't even know you're 100 rupert it's, it's <laughs> not even your 100 rupert's wife that's what the politicians do to all of you because let me tell you why they are able to convince the whole country overnight like this by sponsoring negative pr and all you influencers that work with politicians we see you we know them i know i've got a list of all these all of them but this is what they do they keep the education system nonsense so that even if you pass straight a's in matric you just you just got straight a's in nonsense our south african education system is nonsense that's why we all remain gullible if they if they give you the proper education system politics would be the thing of the past mm. politics depends on an educated society for it to thrive and that's why it thrives in south africa simple you studied politics at UJ a tiny bit then you left right you yeah. got bored or it, something it bored me big time and then you just left yeah probably at diploma stage and I was like to hell with this thing because it was, politics is a popularity thing I I would see people without content people without a plan because they can sing well Oliver Tambo and then we all just vote for that guy Nah, I want to ask you what Advits do. I was like, I, I, I was like, nah, say, nah, 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 this can't be my life. I didn't want to say, Th- this, but SRC Advits. This can't me. be my life. I saw it during my time too. Yeah, like, it's like you're not saying anything. You're not saying anything, but yeah, you you cute. The girls like you. You sing you, nice. You saying absolutely nothing. Yeah, and then you've got that that accent. Yeah, that I'm trying. You know that. You know that and I was like, guys, the the, the pre require the, the the requirements of being a politician <laughs> is that I must change how I speak and say that instead of that. I am not doing that. Comrade. And then and then and then uh, comrade. Yes, you must. know that but let me tell you where the culture comes from for those that that have any interest in the history mm. of politics in this country. A lot of the politicians because they moved around and the leadership was Bomandela. So at some point Tosa people or people about Tosa Nostra in politics. Yes. A lot of the guys from the Eastern Cape were actually in leadership. Mm. Right? So then everybody else followed mm. so just like how everyone now says commander money yes. commander money yeah. because the, the the leadership of the day happens to come from soweto where the swag is commander money gotcha. and more laks are pushing it as mm. as hard as possible mm. you see so you find even in church groups bonkhon they wake each other up over cocoa in the morning yeah hey, commander's morning <laughs> so so you for, for, so you see the influence at that time it was tosa tosa influence and and that's why if you listen to how people spoke that you could swear that they're imitating Matosa Abu Mandela Absolutely. and so so i mean it's a culture thing and mm. until there's, there's other leaders that are prominent maybe from KZN or maybe from northwest and then that that swag It'll would change. change the political culture and lands and landscape would change mm. so for me I, i i was i was informed about such things and mm. i was like i am not just doing it for the sake of doing it so that mm. i can be voted for mm. and i knew that getting into business is is another route into changing people's lives because if you know that the problem is that we are all being chased out of vets university because we haven't paid our school fees yep you know what the problem is money if you go to a mutipe he can pay everybody's school fees no strike tomorrow but if there's no one paying the school fees then the next best guy that can sing must meet us at seven in the morning and we're singing the whole day mm. until enca and newsroom and sabc comes Pull up. we yeah. must just sing the just whole sing. day <laughs> so must I fall. Myself, guys. It must fall. So something else that you know um really worries me is the state of leadership in our country yeah. and the fact that there're not many kind of recognizable leaders emerging, right? Yes. 
And it so happens that when I walk into certain spaces, um, particularly clubs, right? Yeah. You will see the typical Gucci bucket hats, political party t-shirts, girls around, big bellies, popping bottles, and the girl is aspiring to get to that table because there's, let me not mention brands, but, you know, certain types of alcohol there. And, you know, the guys are, like, Emuna, come here, and, you know. And when you start to investigate, you know, some of these people hold very, like, prominent roles yeah. in certain spaces. Sure. And as young people in these spaces who are seeing this and who have heard about it and who see it on social media, should we not be worried? We should. should we not be worried? Because my biggest issue is that voting is coming and, you know, we've always kind of had people who are like, you know what, that's an emerging leader. That, that person is, you know, speaking my truth. And, but now South Africa seems really, really dark when it comes to young emerging leaders, and I could be wrong, guys, but in political parties right now, like, there's nobody I know who is standing out. Yeah. Let me be frank with you. If you look, if you go to Midra, and all respect to women doing it in real life, mm. if you go to Midra, go to any place where there's concentrated apartments, and mm. you do an audit, of how half of these girls pay for it, you'll realize it's our tax money. These politicians and big business, and business, yes, you can say, ah, oh, but it's private sector, how is that our tax money? Let me tell you, most of these tender premiers, actually with their corruption in government, mm. end up paying for these girls. Mm. The old, the politicians, currently, young and old politicians, are at the center of screwing up our social makeup as a country. Our social makeup, the girls now, are all uh, want a quick fix. And I'm not just saying drugs. I'm mm. saying a quick fix. Celebrity overnight, money overnight. And you can't blame them. They come from hard times. Yeah. And, and wh who's at the center? Who's responsible for, for the average person in South Africa living a hard life? The politicians. So they mess up society so that they can be the superhero of individuals in society that they can use. If mm. a politician can't use you, you'll never be anywhere close to them. Yeah. I don't care who you are. That's why half of them are used. Where's both Vuyani Pambo in the EFF? Student stu uh, fees must fall. We saw great young leaders. They were all taken by both Julia C, Libo ANC, Libo Bakokai on no. Bakokai. Hey Julia, hey Julia, hey ANC, hey ANC. Where are they? We can't even hear them. Okay, and Josie. Bakai Batubao. Let me tell you, when I when I was not known by anybody. For, for me to be sane, I'd listen to Lozzy's interviews. Wow. I'd listen to Julius in his time when he was genuine about anything. When last did your grandmother not have lights for over three months mm. and, they, and you thought of Lozzy or Julius? No, be honest with me. Mm. Who the hell has a problem at home and thinks of any politician <clears throat> to come and sort the problem out? Who? Hey. Because if you do an audit in the same parliament, South African parliament, in Cape Town when it sits, I'm not saying some people. I'm not saying do a catch and mark release theory. That's a biology theory, science theory. I'm not saying do all of them. Take all of them and do an audit where they come from. They come from drug infested areas. You expect them to save the country with it when they can't even save their own communities. Catch a wake up, man. All of us must just catch a damn wake up. Mm. So there is nothing that a politician is going to do for you. This country is going to be saved by ordinary people coming get together to unite regardless of, of, of religion, mm. of race, of all that nonsense that keeps us divided as a nation. We all just have to come together and say we are taking the country forward. Mm. Otherwise, there is no superman in politics that's going to do it. All mm. of them are, are, are only taking your votes mm. for, for municipal contracts. I'm telling you if they can't. All of them. All. My man. All. I'm not saying some. All of them. Have any of these parties approached Yes, they have approached me. Some yeah. have offered me houses in Cape Town and in Joburg, fully paid with title deeds. I told them that I'm not short of a title deed in my life. They must relax. Maybe if they was talking to someone who was now, what's that doing with Pandel? Maybe, maybe it would work. It's not, it's not new. It's not <laughs> new. Every young, every young person who has ever emerged in this country has been swallowed by politics. Mm. 
and you must check. They'll be the first to comment, the very young people, because they can't live with the truth. They'll be the first to comment. Politics is so dark, guys, and dirty. Why, why do I have a stronger voice more than politicians right now? Why? Tell me why. Tell me why, Akibita, when I say we are marching as Soweto. And, it's, and, it's, and you can't even count the number of grannies that, that come up. I'm not saying everyone. I'm just saying grannies. Why? But when any political party says, hey, Bungkono, come to the hall, they can't even fill a community hall. A community hall. Hollow. Their community. All right, guys, come on. Why? I hear you saying that normal citizens will be, you know, will probably be the change, right? Yes. I don't want to scream anarchy because, you know, it, that's yeah. another, you know, uh, we're not saying that. We're not saying that. Gee, gee. But <laughs> where does the foreign national conversation come in now, particularly black foreign nationals? Because I coexist with, you know, um, many people and the general perception of Ntlantla Lux is that he hates foreign nationals, particularly black foreign nationals. Yeah. Um, very weirdly, you arrive here with foreign nationals and your friends. Yeah. And the people I'm ruling with right now are foreign nationals. Yeah, yeah. No and problem. you were supposedly at the forefront of an Operation Dudula yeah. that's firstly aimed to kind of eradicate you know, criminality, um, but then almost became a witch hunt where some people lost their lives because... Like um, the, the media says I mean, like when, wasn't there a story about a man who was burned to yeah. death? By, um, by who? I, 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 well, the community, the movement. Uh, There's nothing That's like how that. it was framed. Yeah, by, by the media. The media that's controlled by the politicians. Were you the, were you the leader of uh, the Dudula movement, though? Operation Tudula. Yes, Operation Tudula. Operation Tudula. Operation Tudula. Yeah. Were so you I the want leader? To, I want to tell you something. Yes. Operation Tudula. In Soweto Parliament, mm -hmm. we said that this is a program that resonates with most of our people. And I, being the president of all those millions of people in Soweto, had to adopt a program of that nature inside. And by the way, Soweto Parliament had already programs before the establishment of Operation Tutola mm. ne, that deal with illegal, undocumented foreigners committing crimes in Soweto. So when Tutola came, they said, listen, you are the most prominent person to lead and drive this ship. And I said, with no problem. And I did it. And that's why all of you know Operation Tutola today. So, when I led Operation to do it, mm. I'll give, no joke, no joke, I'm not throwing a number out. I'll mm. give you 10,000 rand for every time you've heard me say that I hate foreigners, all foreigners must go. I've never said such things. Even at home, find it. If you find it, take me, take me and Jeech. I'll pay you 10,000 if you find such things. Let me tell you what I was a leader of. I was a leader of a movement that was addressing undocumented foreigners. Because the country can't hold such people accountable. If you get raped today and there's fingerprints all over because the person is not documented, that fingerprint belongs to Casper the Ghost. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. I was fighting a genuine cause to say that as much as I, the South African, it's illegal for me not to be documented. Do you know that? That means I can't get a driver's license. That means everything after that is breaking the law. Because how do I drive? How do I... Do you understand what I mean? So, and even just looking at it at a political, and I hate looking at things politi from a political point of view, when you get sick and you use bar, the hospital bar, which is now called Chris Hani, we need to account for you. Because tax, tax keeps that hospital um, doors open. Mm. So, if we can't account <clears throat> of who's using things and how, it's a problem. Majority of the violent crime in our country were committed by undocumented people. This is, this is regardless of race or, you know. Regardless. And, the, and when I say yes. undocumented people, the media then said. Black. Black. Yes. I've never. If you find me saying that the fight is against black undocumented people. Mm. I'll, I'll give you 10,000 for every time you hear me say that. Well then, guys, come and grab your 10Ks. The Go out and look for it. Listen, <laughs> I, I've stood on big platforms. For those who don't know China is that Fafi, Fafi uh, gambling thing. 
I've asked, is it, is it even legal? I've, they've been they, they've been part of our culture in the hood for as no, long as I know. I'm telling you. But who has held them accountable? Wait, who are they? Sharp, sharp. Mm. But now when I open a, 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 a what you call it, Kawashinyana, Mokone, Metropolis comes to me. By law, you can't be here. Well, you know why it's easy for them to do that? I'm documented. Mm. I can be charged for it because I'm on the system. Mm. So, so for me, I was uh, number one. I was fighting a just cause that says we are fighting against people who are undermining the laws of this country because the law says you must be documented. By virtue of being undocumented, it's a problem. So that was a, that what what I was fighting. And then when the, a new culture was being adopted in the movement, in the operations, and also being given spotlight by the media, that some people are saying to hell with all foreigners. I said, I said, let's get here. I am on my way out. If this fight is going to turn into we're fighting all foreigners, I'm not leading nonsense. Because what that means is that all embassies must shut down in this country because we don't want foreigners. I'm so happy you did that here. Yeah. So Because so, how the media has misconstrued uh, everything to do with you yeah. and the black foreign national. I had friends coming on here saying, don't interview that guy. Yeah. You know what he said about us, yeah. you know? And these are documented black My, The last time, the last time, mm. I had to get in between someone being killed. Let me tell you, it was last week, Wednesday. So less than two weeks ago, mm. let me just say, in this year, this month as an end of January, I arrested a South African guy stabbing a woman 13 times. I did the arrest. Mm. I stopped him from killing this woman. I called the national office to send me backup steps. I wrote the statement that Docket has only one statement, mine. I went to go sit with this woman, Kopar, taking the, something called the J88. For those who don't I know. know J88, yeah. yes. I, I had to go to this woman. They stabbed this woman. The blade snapped inside this woman. I had to go chill there. After I was finished with the Docket and the police station, locking up this monster, I had to go there. Do you know what the doctor said to me? You've been here for a while. What's the story? This woman, this... Oh, we heard about this. You the guy that arrested that guy? Yes. The, the cops called me. Seps called me. Bro, do you actually know that the woman you saved is undocumented from Mozambique? I said, I do not care. Because that comes last, not first. Now, all your Twitter warriors, ask them when last they saved anyone's life. Forget South African or not. And then they, they did tell me I'm xenophobic. Mm. Me, me, this one, xenophobic. Talking to the wrong person. Wrong person. And what was your reason? My last point, Askis, my last point. There is no politician mm. in South Africa who's ever rolled up their sleeves and went to go fight in Africa, anywhere in Africa, physically, signing indemnities mm. to go fight. You know, Africa, most, some countries have been at war for as long as you've been alive. Yeah. So which, which politician here has ever said enough is enough, I'm going there. If I die, I die, I'm signing the indemnity. Which one? No one. Ntantalax. Ntantalax last year was in Ethiopia. Was in Ethiopia. In the toughest regions. Ditoma. I was moving around in an AK-47. Moving around in an AK-47 with the guys on the ground, making sure that we are defending Africa from the colonization of the West. They'll be scared to even say it as I said it. But that's the truth. It's on video. It's documented. Your media will never tell you that Lux risked his life to go fight for an African country. But in the same year, in the same month, he was branded xenophobic. You guys have a problem. Not, not them. Check yourself. Check do, you yourself. Feel, do you feel like this is a, a bit of like a, a smear campaign? Of, of, of some sorts because you're, you're refusing to align. No, man. It's because I'm refusing to join them in politics. If I join them in politics, that means I've got a disciplinary hearing on Monday morning. That means they can, they've got a switch to my life. So I say, no, can never. Do you not fear for your life? Do they fear for this? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Napela, na, let me tell you, if I put, some of us come from, from a hard, hard history. So we're toughened up very early in life. There's no one in that parliament that I'm scared of. 
pound for pound, you can bring any one of them. Man to man or any other way. They hide behind blue lights and, and big walls. Even the girls they take Bama first year, they, they take them got the blue light. About the blue shell pound for pound. Scample like I got gun to deal. Now could let the whaling cut in because I got the lang of blue light. Yeah, I was shall have blue light, but okay. Think of a politician. Let's do an exercise. Okay. At home, think of any politician, prominent or your best politician or a loud mouth or, or pay back the man, whichever one you, you choose. Think of him right now. Think of that guy naked. Think of Lux naked. And we are now Yaya Nkoman. Even the younger politicians who are used to abusing the older ones in parliament. About if they can they can survive talking to us the way they talk to our to our elders in that parliament. Let's see. Ah mm. man parking. I can give you my last example. Mm. When our people were dying from malls being looted, where were they? They were on ENCA, on CNN, on checking, on in, on their couches, flipping TV on so got removed. Where were the young people? defending we're getting shot at first two days were the roughest we got shot at like you can't believe so don't come and tell me about the politicians please mm. they'll do nothing for you simple what are you doing With what? like wh- what is what, what are you, what are you hoping to achieve from this because from it's what? clear that you're not trying to make money yeah it's clear that you're not trying to become politically affiliated yeah. you're not trying to play in that space you have basically clarified and I, I don't think you've ever done it this way now yeah. on any platform and and thank you so much for that I think it's going to provide a lot of healing to a lot of you know um, foreign nationals looking I mean well, my brother here as well it's great um, but but what are you what is the plan for you? Like, are you going to start a political party? I've said this a thousand times. Some people ask that question differently. Are you the one? I am <laughs> not the one. I am not the guy that's going to save this country the way people think. I am the guy that's going to set and create an environment for the one to be the one without anything disturbing them. If I was the one, the environment would have more black people conscious. My job is to conscientize black people and free them for, from the chains. Not from the chains from white people, Africans people. Let me tell you, the chains currently, the keys of the chains that are, that are holding your capture is controlled by black people. Your own people are keeping you in chains. And I'm not, I'm not saying that the white people are, uh, must go home. They must stay there because I can charge them equally. <laughs> but all I'm saying to you is it's not a racial thing it's not, the environment is not sanitized for one man to emerge and make a difference There's, the environment during Mandela was sanitized for Mandela to make a difference listen to us sing we don't sing the same song as much as our parents were uneducated and our grandfathers were uneducated they sang the same song their unity came without question and that's why a person can emerge in that environment right now I can't imagine any way. Mm. I can only free you so that you can start singing the same song so that one of your wombs can give birth to a child that can become the one. My job is to create the environment and I'm doing it perfectly. And what do you say to foreign nationals living in South Africa? What do you think their jobs are besides, you know, to get documentation? Yeah. You know, are they allowed to join the fight? I mean, because yeah, yeah, some people pleasure. consider South Africa home now. No, not now. South Africa is a home. Yeah. As much as, uh, listen, Zimbabwe is my home too. Let, let me simplify it because I'm also a math student, okay? If lowest common denominator, forget mm-hmm. countries because it might be confusing. The dynamics are too big for some people to comprehend. Gotcha. Listen to me. If you and me are family, Zimbabwe, South Africa, but let's stick to family. Do you know when you visit me during school holidays? Mm-hmm. You have to wash the dishes with me because here in my house by seven o'clock we wash dishes but otherwise my mom throws the throws the biggest fit of all time at your house we are like we have a dishwasher 
we don't have to watch this series. We can play PlayStation in an extra hour. Mm. We can do it at your house. But you can't come to my house and start saying, why don't you have a dishwasher? Wakula, you are mad. So we need to respect each other's boundaries. I even said this before, that even if I take it up and, and give you a complicated example and use cultures, before countries, before the borders, we already had the borders, mm. but there were cultural borders, right? Hamasoto, Bakrosa, Bayakomazolung, what we call Natal today. Mm. One person would go and introduce themselves. I have a delegation that's going to cross here. So please don't take it in a bad way. There's no attacks for your own security. This is who we are. And they can probably verify it. And we can cross on a certain day. What's the mm. problem? So today it's modernized. It's a border system. It's a passport system. Yeah. Why can't we have that control? Why can't we have that security? We must have that security. But Bec who's failing at that? The, the politicians. 100%. Let me tell you. When it comes to Africa, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Africa. We can have a borderless Africa virtually. Not physically. It's impossible. Yeah. Because we share the terrain with the animals. Your politicians, hey, borderless, border, they're talking nonsense. It's impossible. Even nature divides places. There's rivers you can't cross. That's already a border. Do you understand mm. what I mean? There's, so. there's, there's already, there, there's an equator. There's things you can do at the center of Africa that you can't do here mm. in terms of planting because of the heat. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So for me, we can have a special passport that is a borderless passport for Africa. So you can move around as you please. We just need clever people to take these things forward. But you can't take it forward if you haven't thought of it. Because mm. they haven't thought of it. They, they, they're sitting on their bums and thinking about first year students. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth. That's, that's what they do though that's what they do okay i read it with your show with your cameras yeah i read it the blow maker friday um play like mama back on the 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 pm time of first attack tell me tell me who so let's not let let's not divert to that yeah but the truth of the matter is we need to appreciate that different geographical spaces and different people must be respected in their differences. We must find a way to live with each other and coexist and respect our differences. You can't want to be me, me, you. We can't all want to do this podcast mm. and call it the same thing and do it the same way. What, what, what must people consume? Mm. Do you see? Yeah. Let's just respect each other. That's all I'm saying. And we can have a, a stricter traveling system for people coming out of the, outside the continent. Isn't that a brilliant idea? I'm That's saying true. let's do it. Let's do it. Mm. There's no reason for us to hate each other. The, if you look at why Zimbabweans have a problem with Lux, it's what they were told in the media, not what they heard from Lux. There's no Zimbabwean that can tell me that I heard Lux saying this. They are lying. But that shows you that, hey, these politicians will deal with our psyche. With mm. the media, it's too powerful. They deal with your psyche big time. Are you voting? For who? For who? Te just tell me. Just, I'm just, just making tell me. sure. Just tell me for who. You know, because if you said you would, hey, South Africa, that would be such a conspiracy. Hey, yeah. who's in Santa no, like but look, if, if there's a young person that emerges, I will vote for that young person. I'll even support that young person. You can't do the same thing over and over again and expect the difference. Over and over. Over and over and expect the difference. You can't. We've been doing this political thing for a very long time. Mm. It is not working. It, it's not working. Some people won't finish the, this watching this episode because low cheating. They must continue some other time. Mm -hmm. Yo, Blel, that's the reality of your country. Yeah, it's getting hard now. <laughs> it really is. Even recording songs, it's getting hard. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's bad. Our floor is open. Anybody in studio? Anything I could have touched on? No, could have not touched on. Good, good, thanks. I just want to ask, one thing that my question is, I hear you, I hear you, Shasha, the way you've explained things and all, right? The task that you have set yourself is really huge. You don't want to join a political party. You don't want to form one. You don't want to be affiliated with one. The things that you're wanting to achieve really would be easier, as far as I'm concerned, than 
in a political platform. That will take for you years if you are doing it independently like this. So maybe if you can explain for me what you think, because to reach out the masses there outside of a political arena, I think is going to be very difficult. Right. So <clears throat> I'm going to just reference history. When our people were fighting against the apartheid government, mm -hmm. they were not doing it through political part, uh, political party. The political party ideology was put into effect post-94 because at that point, you are legally recognized as a political party. Because there's no use calling ourselves PAC, but on, on, we are not part of the IEC. So we are not a political party. What political party are we? I mean, by name, by labeling. It's not really a political party, you know? So, I am obsessed and over-passionate about our people coming together outside politics. I'll give you today's numbers. All the political parties put together, at best, at best, they don't cross 3 million in membership here in South Africa. We've got 65 to 70 million people. That means there's more people who are outside politics. <laughs> Who's, who's leading those people? As we speak, membership of political parties, when someone says, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a SG, or I'm a chairperson, or I'm a president of a political party X or B, they are leading a serious minority of the country. Who's leading the majority of the country? And we are therefore allowing the minority leadership to dictate policy for the majority of this country. Where is the consciousness of society? Where is it? It's nowhere. Because we are taught to believe that the future of the country is in the hands of this minority called politicians. Can never be. I refuse. Because if I remember a history that I was never taught, that I witnessed by myself as a young man in Soweto, was that it didn't take much resources to break down the structures of a government that was, resourced, that was fully resourced. To, to, to make sure that they continue the capture of our people economically, politically, and socially. That's being led, you know, you remember very well, was the shield. Stina was, was the gun we had. But oh, because we were consistent with putting the pressure, it, they buckled and the system collapsed. So if we could win against a system that was full of hate, there's no way we can win. We can lose the battle against our own people in power. We know them better. We speak the same language. So to, to, to dismantle their, their, their pillars of corruption and, and, and everything else that is negative should be an easier task as compared to that of fighting apartheid systems. So I'm not, I'm not by, by any means worried. It's just a matter of time. It's going to collapse this nonsense thing that's happening in South Africa at some point. And it doesn't need people like me to fast track it. They are doing it for us. People without load shedding today People that, that, that go with, with the amount of crime that is happening in our country. Their incompetence is actually fast-tracking the revolution. I don't need to be smart about it. I must just relax. Matter of time. TikTok. The explosion will happen in your lifetime. That I can promise you. Mm. Sure. My lady. <laughs> another question is, you're talking uh, about that you went to fight in Ethiopia. Ethiopia, right? Ethiopia, yes, yes. Uh, and all that there. Uh, what was your aim? What was your motive? What was your? What were you wanting to prove or mm. to find yeah. out? You know? Yeah. When I went to go fight in Ethiopia, the mission was one: to unite with Africans to protect Africa against Western infiltration. It wasn't for me to go there and try prove anything to anyone. By the way, it's important to, to note that I went to go fight this war in the north part of Africa before I was even deemed xenophobic. So it wasn't that I was going to try <laughs> proof or play a game to say, Yabo, I'm not xenophobic. That's xenophobic nonsense. Happened in the same space and time when I went there. But I, I went there just, be, just before this... this uh, media calling me names so i think if, if my mind serves me well my memory serves me well the last thing i had did in this country that is major was to protect maponya mall 
AK-47, same fashion. So I just knew, I just took what I know in terms of skill and I went to offer myself, my skill, my knowledge, my experience and my life possibly to my African brothers and sisters. Exactly that. People do it for Ukraine and Russia. Americans and everyone in the world sign indemnities to go help in that war. Even some Africans do it, I must tell you. The, what's, the, what's the leader of the DA? What's, what's his name, that, that Stian man? Hazen. Stian Hazen. I actually enjoy that chap when I listen to him. He went to Russia and Ukraine and he came back and gave us such a big speech about Russia and Ukraine. I haven't seen him going to Ethiopia or any country that was that has a coup. I'm glad you said that because so, I don't like him. So, so I don't it's just like what it Stian is. Hazen. <laughs> I don't like him. He probably doesn't like people like me neither. Yeah. But I, well, I'm not informed enough to know. I've never yeah, spoken I'm to him saying. before in my life like that. So. <laughs> so we, we just don't, so for me personally, for, for me personally, someone mm. like Stan Hazen, mm. I'm not quick to judge them. Why I'm not quick to judge them? Because Stan Hazen doesn't feature in any Coco's mind when electricity goes. Yeah. So he's not part of my immediate reality. Mm. He's part of my, my, what's the English? my virtual reality mm. <laughs> because when i tend to do it i might just catch him but in my real life i don't I, no yeah, I know. so yeah so that, yeah i know yeah. anything else anyone yeah <clears throat> yeah i want to find out um or, or rather i want to ask Hori, the the activities with regards to gun training focusing what is the objective behind it yeah so the objective around me and many other of my guys teaching um the ordinary people about guns women men is that there's a lot of guns in townships mm. there, there's more guns than you think mm. you must watch when someone has passed away my comrade when com my mm. comrade pass out shoot endless rounds so that there's guns so we just need to manage the guns educate our people around the guns because guns are not dangerous the people are so if you mm. give a gun to someone who doesn't know how to handle a gun the, someone might just die so if i teach you how to handle a gun my brother let me tell you something if i give you knowledge around guns you'll protect yourself and your family and others that you don't know but if i give you the gun without the knowledge your life is also at risk your own life before anyone else's so mm. and that's why it's my responsibility to share the knowledge that i have if my knowledge was w was around um, hip hop and freestyling, mm. I teach as many kids as possible. But my knowledge is around what what I have. My knowledge is my knowledge. I can't run away from it. I must teach it as much as I can. And that's what I meant earlier on by saying that I don't think I'm the one. Mm. I think that I am spreading my 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 reach and possibly, hopefully, will touch the one so the one wakes up, emerges. And will emerge with the knowledge that I have, because the one if if the one emerges, and they still have to go get knowledge, we are saying the one must be a first year student. Come on, the one must be equipped with knowledge, not only from school but from society, because a lot mm -hmm. of the things that I know, believe it or not, it's not from school. It's from the people that lived around me. Some of them, like my dad, for example, I'm talking about Friends. people. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about <clears throat> people. Um, it doesn't matter what you think of this. This is mm. my truth. Mm. My dad now was a career criminal who stole from the apartheid system to fund the revolution against it. So they were very good with the guns. I grew up seeing AK-47s on the table. I grew up listening to them plan bank robberies, nearly post, nearly post bank or whatever it was mm. back in the day. The, planning bank robberies. I'd go to school grade one. And in that class, I'm excited because I know today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I know their move and I know which car they're going in because I've been listening <laughs> and they come back home <laughs> and they just have uh, <laughs> black plastic bags I know it, it, it happened and later on what they now called each other comrades with, and they don't know the definition of what that really is mm. then they would come then most of the money would go to camps to feed some of the guys who are in camps training to come back to fight for the country so that's knowledge I got outside school so I think the message there for, from me is that don't let school get get in the way of your education. Wow. Sure. Mm. sure. Any last words to any young, old, 
rich poor south african watching this yeah south african and foreign national yeah. and people beyond the borders of yeah. course because i know this is a very special We've got episode. south africans and africans in the diaspora yes it's not Absolutely. only just just south african that matter yeah yeah, yeah. And, and for anyone who's interested how would you how would they get like affiliated to the training okay. yeah sure so so look my last words are that first let's be contact how i'm i've been going around the country mm. helping with service delivery helping with training people, helping with just conscientizing people, spreading the knowledge that I have to as many people as possible. And I've been moving with a platform called the Atlanta Lux Foundation. The Atlanta Lux Foundation is similar to the Nelson Mandela Foundation, except it actually does work in your community. I didn't mean to fire any shots. <laughs> but the, my foundation, when I get into your community, I work with the leaders. I'm not there to contest your leaders. If, if they feel threatened by me, it's their problem. But as soon as society calls me, if you if you go on my social media, perhaps you you go on on online and, and just research more about the foundation. Mm. We do we do just six things, and I don't want to go through all of them because they're a bit intense. But a lot of it is we support the government of the day. We support the government of the day. That is important. Mm. And how we support it, where it can't reach, we get to that to that corner. So we go to the schools. We we get rid of drugs in schools. We it doesn't matter who says what about that. We are not going to tolerate a country where criminals are camouflaging in school uniform. I do not care what you're going to say. Mm. thing when every school I go into, I come out with weapons and drugs. Mm. What, what mm. kids are you talking about? Yeah. So wait. There's some kids who wake up, get dressed to fight for a better um, uh, future through a better education, but they're disturbed by some of your kids listening. Batwang ba pampa, batwang ba into school uniform of fashion, batwang ka di tricota, batwang whatever motu is got a bona. Yes, kakusa shina marbuka, I wali we. How na nick so so those type of things. As the foundation, we address them. And we go into societies and we go as surgeons and and and, and literally go into theater and, mm. and all the social all the nonsense that has been caused by, 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 by the history of this country, the current history, mm. including the current politicians, we, we go and mend the wounds of our people and mm. we educate them of how not to get hurt again. Mm. We give them the independence of thinking, independent thinking. Our people don't have that. We are all mess, mess thinkers. We all do it. But when you're sitting alone, you can't do it. You, you, can't, can't. Help, you can't help the kid next door mm. homework. I mean, come on. Homework. You can't help them. But once we're all in a group, mm. you, you feel the need to say, I actually pass maths well. I'll help them with homework. But when you're alone, you can't just help them with because you are now entertaining us because mm. we're here. I hate that with, with, with everything. Yeah. So, long story short, Santa Lux Foundation is there. It's the vehicle that I use yeah. to go around the country and perhaps even the continent and do the best that I can to advance, unlock people's minds and set the right environment sanitize the environment so that the young people that are coming can be better than me love it that's it and how do the, how do people uh, get in contact with the Atlanta Lux yeah. Foundation so th there's an email when I always give out a number but it gets flooded by 50% people that are sending naked pictures and all that nonsense <laughs> hello so, Mr. Lux yeah so you see that type of <laughs> And, and tell you lies about how their mother died in a car accident. They need two million oh to start my. a business. I'm like, okay. But, <laughs> but the long and short of it is info at NL, N for Atlanta, L for Lux. So info at NL Foundation dot CO dot ZA. That, that message goes to the office. There's a team that's waiting. And if it's a serious message, we'll come to your, to, to, to your um, community. We'll do the best we can. We've moved away from helping individuals. We mm. help communities, mm. not people, communities. Mm. So when you tell me that we're now so Patali school fees, trust me, you have to be an extraordinary special case mm. for us to focus on you mm. because the country is bleeding. So we might as well focus on making sure that the country doesn't bleed to death rather than you. Uh, another quick example we do um, at the foundation, procure ambulances for villages. Mm. The, but not your traditional ambulances that we know um, in Gauteng. You know, mm. South Africans think Gauteng is South Africa. The, South Africa is bigger than that. Mm. There's some areas in villages where ambulances and even police cars can't get in. So if Gogo gets a heart attack, game over. There's no ambulance that's coming. There isn't. It doesn't matter how much you call. So what we've done as a foundation, 
we are speaking to to um uh, nissan and we're speaking to hilux and we're speaking to the guys with that that manufacture the big vans mm. to convert them into ambulances i think that would be a good csi mm-hmm. for them and if they don't see the value in it because for whatever reason we'll we'll raise the money we'll buy the ambulances we'll buy the the, the big bikes we'll convert them into the ambulances and take them to the villages where people go to where people live mm. you see so these are some of the things that we do mm. slowly but for more info on it contact contact um Info um, at Anna yeah, Foundation. Yeah. That's your name. 100%. Sure. And for all the girls who are submitting their CVs on the number, are you single? Me, I'm very married to this country. And ah. <laughs> I'm married to the continent <laughs> called Africa. Married to South Africa. <laughs> so, so, so I've got, I've got, a, a, I'm, I'm in a polygamous marriage. Okay. I've got Tim. Mm. Tim. Mm. Yeah, the, my first wife is Africa, my second wife is South Africa. Okay, then. Yeah. Ladies, you heard it here first. Yeah. Maybe you could be the third. <laughs> <laughs> but I told you, we're focusing on community. We both <laughs> not on one. Oh, not on one? Oh, wow. <laughs> but a message for all the ladies. I said mm. it earlier. Yeah. And actually, the guys. Mm. I don't think that we are structured like our parents and our and our, and our great grandparents were structured mm. this thing of love is almost a myth in our generation almost i can speak for love for 10 hours it's special it's amazing it must be experienced but it must never be chased what must be chased though is instead of a love affair is a life affair Stop trying to go choose the hottest girl or girl stop choosing the the, the most the, the tallest guy bulk. Choose someone you can build a life with. Mm-hmm. Mm. For me that is that simple. That's the magic to make to, to making sure that you build a legacy that you can you that your kids can inherit. Mm. If most of you listening to this podcast, watching the podcast right now, have been in love affairs that failed dismally. So how's about you just try a life affair? How's about you just try to choose a partner based on things you can build, based on things you can leave as a legacy and things that your kids can inherit. Mm. Right now, right now, there is, it's very hard to come across the 30-year-old who owns property. But we are more educated than our grandmothers and a hundred majority of our grandmothers owned property. Mm. Thanks. But we own Mac, makeup and... I, uh, let me leave it there. Commander's mom. Yeah, On the real though, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Big pleasure. Thank um, you. it was it was a struggle getting you here. Yeah. Funny enough, it's sure. it's not as easy as people think. Mm. Getting you into a space, but I am, you know, super thankful. I think everybody here sure. in the studio is super thankful. Season two has kicked off in style, twenty twenty three. Uh, we're hoping we're going to be award-winning this year. Um, and yeah, thank you for believing in the podcast, sure. for coming through. Sure. Uh, thank you for what you're doing for the community. Thank you very um, much. I can't wait to see the NL Foundation flourish. I think it's going to be a very, very sure. good year. And um, to anybody who is watching this, I think we're extremely inspired. There's a lot of clarity, a lot of education, sure. and uh, I think a lot of good intent. Sure. You know, yeah. so thank you so so much for joining yeah. us. And yeah. uh, I told you that I love you. Bye I bye. love you too. I love you there, reason. I love you. Because where you come from, let you let 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 your people know right now that mm. are subscribing. Mm. Where you come from, we the only meeting that mm. pros ever called amongst these people mm. was that there's a young girl called Chichi, but we need to protect her. He was a pro. And then all of a sudden, then I see you, and I see you a lot, and I see you a lot, and it's impo- And for me, it's important. It's touching that we're yeah. sitting here, and he's here with us, by the way. Of course. And and he's very proud of of, of you and probably myself. And I, I'm 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 grateful that we could be having a conversation where I'm convincing you to let go of drugs, or let go of <laughs> men, or let go of politicians, and let go of people. But we are here shout on a productive out. conversation. So for that, I say shout out. Yes. And thanks to Pro. Sure, sure. And thank you so much to everybody who is tuned in. Don't forget to follow, subscribe. POVXGG, POVXGG. Remember, our goal this year is to get to 100,000 subscribers, guys. Sure. Maybe we can do it in the next three months. Who knows? Here we go. Right? If, we get, if we get to 250, 250K subscribers this year, yeah. maybe I'll contest all these old people 
2024. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yes. <laughs> Listen, so if you think he's the next, you know, problem yeah. on these political streets, you better subscribe now. <laughs> we'll see you guys again next time. That's my point